So good afternoon, everyone. You are listening to NAWA Educates. This is an educational series hosted by the National Association of Women Artists. Fabulous organization, by the way, that supports and promotes women in the arts. My name is Myrna Haskell. I'm executive editor of Sanctuary Magazine. This is an online publication for women that empowers and inspires with compelling content. And about 30 to 35% of that content is that we feature women in the arts in all of the different fields of the arts. So I'd like to begin today by thanking the NAWA board members and also Bianca Kovic, executive editor, and Natalia Korencroft, president, for inviting me to speak with you today. So let me start by sharing my screen here and talking about our subject, which is maximizing your online presence, part of which should be that you're looking for spaces to be featured and interviewed in. Because besides having your website and your social media presence, you wanna be out there, you wanna be interviewed, you want people talking about your art. So let's get started. Why online? Okay, I know that a lot of you are thinking, I like when people can see my art in person and I totally get this. I was just at two fabulous exhibitions over the weekend and I saw and spoke to artists in person. There's nothing like it. The work looks beautiful in person with the lighting and the textures that you can see, but you've got to get yourself online because it's the wave of the future. Everybody is going online for resources now. Many of the magazines that used to be print only have now gone all green or they also have a very large online presence. So you wanna get your work out there. You also want um, readers can visit your personal website and social media with just one click. So if I go into, it's great when I can meet an artist in person and hear them speak about their work, but now I've gotten their card and their materials. I have to go home, I have to turn on my computer and find their website. When you're in an online magazine, your website link is right there. One click, somebody sees your entire presence. They see your series, they see your social media pages, they see your contact information, everything is right there with one click. You get your broader reach globally and nationally, and you also see different demographics online, whereas having you know a local exhibition, you're gonna only see a certain part of the population. And it's also easy, no uh, snail mailing or drop off needed. So those are some reasons you wanna definitely get yourself online, even though you're still gonna continue with gallery visits and exhibitions and those other in-person things. Okay, so I thought it was important to talk to you a little bit about the types of online spaces. The obvious ones are the arts journals and the arts publications, but you can also take a look at some of the magazines that are lifestyle and consumer oriented that also celebrate the arts. So Sanctuary is one of those, right? So I had just told you that part of what we do is to feature women in the arts, men in June in our Father's Day issue, but we mostly all year feature women in the arts, but other parts of what we do is wellness education, um, interviewing humanitarians and business leaders who make a difference, travel, career, finance, but arts is a big part of what we do. So you also want to look for those magazines as well, because that will broaden your spectrum of your list of people who you want to contact. There are alternative um, online spaces that you can also present yourself in. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about these. There's the online galleries. That's the Saatchi, Pixel, Pixels, Fine Art America. There's a bunch of them. The difference here is you are one of hundreds or thousands of artists with a page. So the URL is gonna be the brand of the online space and then you are gonna be at the end and the branding around your work will be that particular space, Fine Art America, for instance. So that's just to keep that in mind, but it is a place you can sell your work. Online artist collectives, artist collectives, as most of you probably know, are groups of artists that help each other promote their work and they have a group space. Art bloggers, just really briefly, blogs versus online magazines. A blog generally is an, a, a more narrow opinion perspective space. I know that it's grown from that and there are now blogs with advertising and guest bloggers, but it tends to be a little different than what's considered an online magazine, which follows a style guide. There's different levels of editors and many writers that contribute. And then of course, you can also look for nonprofit and community online spaces. But generally, if you get into any of those, it's probably gonna have a little bit more of a local slant. 
Okay, so how do you find these spaces? I know you're thinking about this. So the first thing is Google's your friend. So just start with a search. Feature and magazines that feature artists, you know, best magazines that featured artists, artist features, those kinds of simple searches, and just start to garner a list and then you cross reference from there. So, you want to ask gallery owners that you know personally, other artists, arts nonprofits for spaces that they know respect artists and they're going to present you in a good light. You can also go to individual artist websites and take a look at their either media, news, feature sections to see where they were featured and then take a look at how that particular magazine interviewed them or featured them and decide if that's something that you would like for your own personal art business. Okay, so now we're into the nitty gritty. So um, are you ready to be featured? This all has to do with your online presence. Okay, so the first thing is your personal website. I know that some of you don't have one. I know that part of it may be a money issue or building your own website's too daunting and you don't wanna maybe hire somebody to do it for you or you don't know the first thing about computers or whatever it is. But it is something that's really a must have. As an editor, if I get an unsolicited query from an artist, the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is go to a website, hopefully their personal website to look at their work where I can see reviews, exhibitions, and I can see their different series. So really think about trying to find a way to do a website. Sometimes you can find a young person who's very computer savvy, who's right out of college that can help you with this. And you can ask around some of the web builders are very easy to use. And all you really need is just a couple pages. It doesn't have to be real complicated. Put your best pieces on your home page and think gallery. Okay, what I mean by this is I know a lot of artists, you're so creative, you're so fabulous with color, right? So you want it, you're, you're, website itself to almost look like an art masterpiece, right? You're worried about the fonts, the colors, maybe some of the fancy flash um, stuff that we can have on our websites now, but that's not what you want for an artist page. So just as you would think of your work in a gallery space where there's a lot of white space and then your work pops, this is what you want for your website, particularly the home page. You want your work to pop. Everything's about the piece of artwork and the work, not all of the stuff around it. Be sure that you have a bio and an artist statement listing all of your special awards and exhibitions. I'm suggesting here awards and exhibitions are a separate um, space on your navigation bar. And you also want, I already touched upon this a little bit, your own URL or domain. That means you are marysmithart.com. You are not a string of other things or another company with a slash and a number and then slash Mary Smith. It's name recognition. People will get to know you if you have your own URL and domain. And then you wanna also include your social media links. Okay, so now I've picked out three um, home pages from artists that were featured in Sanctuary Magazine that I like for different reasons. So this is Ms. Penny Brantley's page. Um, she's a phenomenal painter. She has a nice white space going on here. She has one of her paintings that's very um, contrasting and light and dark and shadowing. And boy, does that pop with a white background. Her name is also nice and large and she has simple things across her nav bar here. You can easily see where her bio paintings are. She has her artist statement, her exhibition history. And if you have reviews from art critics, curators, whoever, please do a separate section for that. That's fabulous. And then I also wanted to point out that she has pennybrantley.com. So that's her own URL. So people will think Penny Brantley, boom. Okay, the next artist, Catherine Keene. She is a painter and a visual effects artist from California. She was one of our featured artists in 2019. This one also has the white space with one photograph of a, of a work, but there was a couple of other things I wanted to point out. So she does have her contact information in the nav bar, but she also has this, let's keep in touch in another font color, which makes it really easy. If somebody sees stuff they like, maybe they wanna purchase, they know to click right here. And she has her social media links right above her search bar, which if people wanna search for a particular piece that they saw in an online interview, they're gonna see her social media stuff there as well. And the only thing I would say on this one is I would have, I would have Catherine Keene art in larger font. 
Next and final is Marlene Wiedenbaum. She is a pastel artist. And you notice here that there's no white background, but here's why I think it works. The softness and combination of the pastels with the gray, I think really pops nicely here. And you can't tell because this is a still photograph, but there is um, a slideshow here. So there's a slideshow of several of her works, but each one stands alone for about five seconds. So you still get this less busy appearance to the homepage. I also love that she has Wiedenbaum.com, just her last name, and that this is what you see pop in white lettering and her first names in smaller letters. And then she has a fabulous um, quote from a major magazine about her work. So very good. Moving on. So um, I love this graphic because everybody who's in midlife at least pulls their um, hair out when they talk about social media. I could spend a whole um, you know, education space on this. So I'll just say briefly, if you listen to the experts, most experts will say Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest are the three best places for artists because they're very visual. But I do wanna say, and we've all seen this with the pandemic, that YouTube and video has become extremely popular. So if you're one of those people who's comfortable in front of a camera and you want to maybe have an art presentation or have a video of your artwork from a particular exhibition or want to do an online artist talk, then you might want to think about YouTube. And then I say Twitter too, because a lot of our international audience is on Twitter and we've actually found quite a few fine artists and musicians on Twitter. So don't not go to Twitter because you're nervous, but here's the most absolute important thing. Less is more. Do not go on five, six social media spaces unless maybe you have one or two assistants. Instead, pick two, maybe three max that you're going to have a presence on and do something on it every day. Post every day, interact with your followers. Less is more in that sense. And then also one other thing that I find that a lot, a lot of artists do is they'll mix their personal photographs with children and parents with their artwork, you really want to have a separate social media space for your artwork. Don't mix personal and art. Okay, so the query letter. So this is my wheelhouse. So I know a lot of you out there, I do know artists that are phenomenal writers, by the way, but I know a lot of you out there are focused on your art. When it comes to writing, you're like, oh, I gotta send a note. But in a lot of cases, you're sending a blind note or an unsolicited query, right? So the query letter becomes very important because that's the first that I'm hearing about you. So the most important thing is that you familiarize yourself with the magazine. Don't send out, don't copy paste and send out a hundred things to different people and think you're gonna do better that way. Go to the magazine, take a look, pick something out that you really enjoyed and you really liked and tell the, tell the editor in one sentence what that was and why you're contacting him or her. Then start out by saying something about yourself, but do not copy paste a bio. This has happened to me too. I've had these like really lengthy bios that are copy pasted and I'm just trying to get to the website URL. Editors get inundated with email. And lots of times we might not even go on email one day. I, we'll find a day where we catch up with correspondence. So you wanna catch their attention. You don't want it to be this really lengthy thing. So just mention maybe one award that you're particularly proud of, one um, exhibition perhaps, and then don't put attachments in. If you really feel the need to put one of your paintings, just embed it within the email. Include your website link. There we go with the website again. And if you're not comfortable as a writer, please have a writer at her friend review. That does not mean that I don't, that I'm looking for you to be a fabulous writer because you're a national known sculptor. But the problem is, is if I see something that's really sloppy and I know other editors feel the same way, I might think that when I have to contact you with a list of items that have to be sent and deadlines that maybe you're not gonna be quite so organized about it because you weren't real careful with your query letter. So that's the reason for that. And then of course, um, follow up in two weeks if you haven't heard. Please do not be discouraged if you haven't heard right away. Again, we're inundated with email. I do try to respond to everybody that writes to us. Even if somebody's not gonna be featured, I try to find other places I can support them in the magazine, but give us some time. If it's been about two weeks, then you can send a follow-up. 
Okay, let's talk about headshots because when you are um, interviewed or featured in a magazine, they're going to ask you for a photograph with your work or at an exhibition with your work. It's usually not just pieces of your artwork. And I know some of you get uncomfortable about this. So a couple of things. Ask the editor ahead of time if it's landscape or portrait. Of course, these are all portrait. They're the vertical up and down. Um, images because different online magazines use different um, sizes and portrait versus landscape styles for their landing pages. So you might want to ask about that ahead. I've gone through and just, you know, cropped photographs the way I've needed to if I think that it still looks really good from the original, but you might want to ask about that ahead. Let's start on the left with Sudaika Zinga Terrell. She was a featured artist in Sanctuary, and I just absolutely love this photograph for not numerous reasons. It's colorful and bright. I love her smile. Her outfit actually goes with the mixed media and collage work that's behind her. She almost becomes a part of the picture here, like she's a piece of artwork within the art work. Then we have Meryl French in the center. Um, so I love this. I don't need to see the whole entire painting. You see that her beautiful cityscape is there. It's a little bit on a slant, but then you see the books behind and the color of her shirt and the color of the shelving of her books make this whole piece fabulous. I hope you all see that too. And then on the right, we have Sandra Bertrand. And the reason I included this one is I love the personality of this one. So Sandra was also a featured artist. Um, she's posed here with her painting of Louise Nevelson. And I love the fact that it's in black and white and she's in a colorful shirt with a colorful necklace, but it's the expression on the person in the portrait versus her expression that really pulls out the personality. So think a bit about what you're sending before you send a photograph in for your feature. And please do not make these common mis submission mistakes. So find the correct contact. So you'll see under either about or contact or something like that on the navigation bar at the top of the online magazine, ways to submit work. Sometimes they'll tell you they do not accept unsolicited submissions. And in that case, you need to go to somebody to get recommended or move on to the next magazine. But find the correct arts editor or submissions editor. Smaller magazines might just have an email. I don't have a really large team, so you're going to send it to a specific email. We tell you to, but for larger magazines with really large staffs, they'll probably have a specific arts person, even if it's not an arts publication. Do not send attachments. I mentioned this before, um, you know, we're worried about hackers. I mean, look at what's happening today with the hacking situation. So if I've never heard of you or seen you or met you and I see attachments on an email, I'm not gonna open them. So that's why you wanna wait till the attachments are requested. And if you do anything with a photograph, embed it in the body of the letter. Be clear in the subject line. Some magazines will tell you exactly what to put in the subject line so they can file it appropriately. If they do not, put something simple, artist submission, artist seeking information about submissions, something like that so it's obvious where it needs to go. Please label photos with captions. Most of you will send me, if you know you're going to be featured, um, a separate document with what the picture is, what the size is, what the mediums use, et cetera, et cetera, the year, maybe even in some cases. But if there's just numbers on the photographs, it can kind of get sketchy when we're now we're on deadline and I'm looking for the correct photo. If the caption is actually in the file name, it makes it a lot easier for us on our end. And then, of course, I, I say fuzzy photos just for the alliteration and for fun because I'm a wordsmith person, but photo quality um, is, is a big problem at times. Um, so here's, here's what happens. So you're going to be featured in an online magazine. 99% of the artists that send me photographs of their work, they're beautiful, high quality photographs with great resolution. Okay, but then all of a sudden I ask them, please send me a photo of you with your work or a photo from an exhibition. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, I don't have one of those. This is why we went over this. So a friend or a husband or a partner is taking a photo from a, from a cell phone and you're sending it to me. And now all of a sudden the Christmas crispness and quality of the photograph of you with your work, which is probably one of the first things a viewer is going to see, is not near as good quality as what 
the other items that you've sent. So the best images to send an online publication are PNGs or JPGs or JPEGs. And the reason for that is BMPs tend to be really large. So if you're sending them via email, they can slow down um, you know, the, the email quality. It might not even go through as your client. So you can look into the filing sharing services. I've just mentioned a couple here. We transfer Dropbox. Dropbox transfer is a newer one that Dro Dropbox has developed, but you can send those larger files and those. But for the purposes of what I need for your feature, I don't need these ginormous, you know, 20 megabyte uh, photographs. Here's what I need. So we're talking PPI, which is pixel per inch, not DPI, which is dots per inch. Dots per inch is what we all dealt with if you are a lady that's closer to my age in the 70s and, and beyond, be, before that, where it was just, everything was print. So it was dots per inch on a printed page. PPI is pixels per inch. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about online publications. The standard is a density of 300 PPI. That's what you want to send. And you know that if it's looking like about a four by six, which you would say in a frame in your home, for instance, or maybe a little larger than that, a 300 PPI photograph would measure at 1200 pixels by 1800 pixels. So that's four times 300 by six times 300, right? Now, here's the important thing about that. That's the original photograph. That's not you taking the photograph and making it into a 1200 to 1800. Now you've blown it up and now the density isn't as good. And now it's gonna get that sort of grainy pixel to look. Much easier to make a picture smaller than to make one larger. So our current October featured artist is this Bina and just, in deference to her, she did not send me these photographs. So I just mucked with them for the purpose of just showing you and making my point. So I took her original photograph and I made it less dense to begin with. So I have 175 by 231 pixel image here and I'm just showing you now I'm blowing that up. Okay, twice the width, twice the length. And you can see how grainy this photo is to the right and how I like to say it's pixel, but the degradation of quality of the photo goes down really quickly when it's not at the correct density. Okay, so then um, I just wanted to let you know that you wanna definitely follow up with your editors at Sanctuary at the end of the year, and I know other magazines do this as well. We like to revisit all our featured artists through the, out the year and give updates. Sometimes we'll even share in social media if a previous featured artist um, was, was in our magazine and had some unbelievable award that they received or something that happened in their lives that was really great with exhibition wise, we might share that. So don't burn your bridges. Keep your um, relationships going with your editors. Share in your social media spaces so that more eyes besides the audiences for the online publication are gonna get on that feature. And then um, also share on your website and your media news and features sections. So make sure that you do that before, um, you know, you just close out, wow, I was in that magazine and it's all over. So um, today, I hope I didn't go too, too fast. Um, I know that that was a lot of information to pick up, but this particular, well, actually all of the NAWA Educates programs are gonna come back up in archives. So you can always go back to the slideshow and take some notes if you were unable to. But I did receive a few questions from artists over the last couple of days. And there were a few things that I didn't actually cover in the presentation that I'd like to talk to you about now. And so um, one was, what about copyright? So um, with copyright, you own the copyright to your work. And so um, when I publish you in an interview or a featured space, I'm getting your permission to use your photographs of your work in my featured piece or interview on you. 
I am not asking permission, I would need to if I had planned to do that, to put your work elsewhere in brochures or t-shirts or other things with the magazine. I don't own the rights to your work, you own the rights to your work. So what you need to do, this goes back to your research on the online magazines you're searching for. You need to make sure that they're posting a copyright with your name underneath your work in all places where your work appears on that publication. And you need to also make sure that any material that they send you on copyright, please read through it carefully because normally you're just offering your work for our feature. It's archived in our magazine and that's the end for us. You own the work. I had another person ask, I don't have an agent. Can I still be published? Absolutely. So I think with the online space now being what it is, um, there's so many different magazines and choices online. There's probably a few journals that still request an agent to speak to somebody, but a lot of magazine editors will meet artists at exhibitions. They'll look for artwork online. They'll take recommendations from other artists or have advisors. And um, you usually can send in unsolicited submissions. But again, if you go to the website and you look at how you should submit and who you should contact, you're gonna know that ahead of time. Does it cost me money to get featured? Okay, so the answer to this is it shouldn't. So um, it should not cost you money. It does for you to be featured in Sanctuary Magazine and many, many others, hundreds of publications. It's a win-win, right? So we are choosing the artwork that's gonna go onto our site that we think our viewers are gonna enjoy. And we think that we're gonna get more viewers because we're featuring you and highlighting your gifts on our site. And then you're getting more eyes on your work because we have our huge online presence and that's gonna give you a larger audience. And so that's how that relationship works. So be wary of anybody that's asking you for money to be featured in their magazine. Um, let's see. So contact information for me. Um, if you go to sanctuary-magazine.com, and that's our URL. And at the very top left, when you go there of our masthead, you're going to find all our social media spaces. So please join us there and follow us. Um, we'll follow you back. I did not list the YouTube and LinkedIn URLs only because they're these long strings of letters and numbers and, and they don't make sense, but you can find them right from our masthead. We do have a free e-newsletter that goes out the first Friday of each month. And so you can keep track of, of who's in the magazine and what we're doing. We do have a large blank canvas section where we support women in all of the arts, dance, theater, fine art, photography, um, you know, all the different music and lyrics. Uh, so if you're not able to be featured, we can only feature a certain number of artists a year. And we just try to include as many people as we can. So just as you would with any other online magazine, you know, poke around, do your research and um, before you before you actually query them. I did have I do want to say one thing about sending work in, though, before I close out. Usually an editor will ask you because they've already gone to your website for specific series of your work. If they do not ask you for specific series of your work, please um, follow up with, would you like a smattering of the things I do because I work with several mediums or are you looking to highlight me in a particular series? So that was a question that I got from a few artists too that I just wanna make sure that I touched upon. But I hope that today um, you, you learned a few things. Um, the main takeaways, I think, are that you do research on the online magazines you're going to approach. If you're not a writer, you have somebody look over your query letter, but it's succinct, it's to the point, and it has your link to your fabulous website that you know a little bit about now because we talked about it. And that you really, you know, just take a look at previous features that magazines have done on other artists, because you're gonna know if it's the quality feature that you wanna see with your art. Don't sell yourself short, folks. Um, you're talented, 
your, the representation that a magazine does on you, you're deserving of the right representation. So this is all about just taking the time to do the research and then you're gonna reap the benefits in the end if you get yourself featured in the right types of magazines. So I wanna end today by thanking the NAWA board again for inviting me as a guest speaker. And I would like to wish everybody a fabulous afternoon. Thanks so much for joining me today.